the lala ji and the mystery of fish a mystic who visited this planet between 1873 to 1931 it was the beginning of a period of renaissance in nakshbandi tarika is there a mystery surrounding the birth of lala ji and his younger brother chacha ji these were the popular names by which the devotees called him was there a plan before the advent of lala ji by sending hazrat baqiullah to india by sheikh hazrat khwaja mohammad amkan ki a visit of blanket wrap mystic never seen before the incident the mystic is speaking to her of kabir asking for fish from a household where such dishes were inhibited and never conceived of and was there a symbol of fish and finally serving of fish and the boom of the mystic still there are more pieces to this jigsaw puzzle the downfall of mogal empire declining sunni islamic influence induction and bias of seekers from other religious faith more liberal attitude of sheikh hazrat mazhar mir forecast of sheikh abul hasan nasirabadi about the advent of two persons from hindu faith etc i have heard this story from my grandmother shakuntala devi who envisioned the entire episode through her intuition durga devi the mother of lala ji did not live long to narrate this herself shakuntala devi used to say at while narrating this story venerable durga devi used to get very introspective and quite emotional while narrating the incident she used to plunge into the ocean of bliss within and trust in the unknown and unknowable her face used to have an indescribable glow while narrating the entire incident she used to narrate again and again as if it was her zikr or constant recitation she mentioned that the mystic had neither been seen before nor after the incident however he spoke in a soft captivating voice and he spoke to her of the message of kabir it may sound like a fairy tale to the mind remember existence speaks through silent gestures and pronounces aesthetic beauties furthermore when you have mastered the art of listening it takes one to even deeper realms within oneself and then it helps to connect to one's own wisdom learning to listen to inner silence is probably the essence of inward journey then you can see many facets of the entire event and a precise divine scheme behind each happening well planned well written and conceived a story by the unknown and unknowable writer indeed it is so and as director i am presenting the entire episode as a three dimensional screen play for the process of transformation to continue in existence things happen in a chronological order the great precision is spring autumn winter and summer all happen in an order and no event can be ignored simply because perhaps it does not fit your expectation of likings just as or as a parent you do not listen to the wailings of your ignorant children so to god does not listen to your wailings as the outcome of ignorance and negation on the basis of religion and many other reasons when autumn comes in the scheme of existence it brings a new portrayal to the spring and out of trust you say 
I know not what is the wish of my beloved in this is. During autumn all leaves turn yellow and fall, the tree becomes bare. Seeing the tree in this state, an ignorant one may lament. However, wisdom does not lament. It knows the autumn helps the tree to nourish and nurture. And thereafter when its spring comes, it brings a new portrayal to the tree. The tree is fully alive and invigorated. Such is the understanding of an enchanted heart full of love and trust. With this event is appeared as if the silent prayers and trust of Durga Devi, who happened to be the mother of Nakshbandi, Lalaji and Chachaji, brought fruits to her quiet and noiseless mansion, a boon for her womanhood and the married life. Furthermore, the existence was to fulfill its commitment and promise in the process of evolution of Nakshbadi Tarik as well. This sacred legend I have been hearing since my childhood. As a child, I was told by the elders, yet wiser, that the seekers associated with this Tarikat should not consume fish. Because with this sacrifice of fish, Lalaji and Chachaji were born, and so on and so forth. I listened to such naive explanation and decided to unravel this mystery for the sake of millions who are intrigued by this. A curiosity arose to discover mystery of it all. Who was this blanket wrap mystic? Where from did he appear and where did he disappear to? What is the significance of two fish? And so on and so forth. Such unanswered questions continued to intrigue until I attained. Then one day the existence unfolded the mystery. However, to explain and unravel this mystery I had to wait. I knew Waiting is an important inner dimension of trust. There was no hurry. I had known when existence would want to unravel, it will indicate. For quite some time, a few of my beloved friends and seekers have been pestering me to speak, explaining this mystery. Existence is not a zigzag puzzle, although it appears to be. Indeed, the secrets of such mystery are revealed only to an awakened one. Remember on the dumb bosom of this oblivious glow, although as unknown beings we seem to me, also we look at each event as unresolved zigzag puzzle. It is not so. Existence is one and harmonious both within and without, and nothing happens unwanted. Our lives are not aliens nor as strangers join or a strange event happening. However, as human beings, we move towards each other by a causeless force. Most of the times that remain unknown and intriguing to human mind, so too. Various events take place as a mysterious happening. Just as the soul recognizes its answering soul, so too each thread of this mystery recognizes each piece, each event attracts the other until the entire picture is clear. In the absence of awakening, however across dividing time and on life's roads, absorbed, rapt traveler, Turning it recovers familiar splendor in an unknown face and events, and is still remain intrigued. Verily touched by the warning fingers of swift love, it thrills again to an immortal joy, wearing a mortal body for delight. Indeed, there is a power within that knows beyond our knowing and finite cognition. Certainly we are greater than our thoughts and sometimes 
earth unveils that vision here to unfold a new vision to live to love are signs of infinite things but this requires awakening indeed love is a glory from eternities as fares and grows with trust to manifest infinite glories and when such events present to them it comes like this difficult to understand the moment awakening dawns you are aware that something beyond explanation has happened existence has opened its mysteries and infinite treasures into your awareness with enlightenment such questions do not intrude the mind any more mind is only the surface expression of that which lies within as unfathomable inner ocean truth reveals itself existence unravels its mysteries however these cannot be understood through mind and its various instruments let me explain certain aspects of this mystery that stands like a jigsaw puzzle nothing is missing for you certainly something is missing and you do not know how to put these scattered pieces together and that which is missing your awareness the first piece of the puzzle relates to the event of 1857 with east india company british rule was setting its feet into indian subcontinent nationalist forces joined together to avert the rising british power and influence however in front of british strength and force all failed the movement was crushed however the events shook the hearts of ordinary citizens under these circumstances chaudhry harbakh rai who was the father of lala ji along with his extended family moved from ancestral family village to cosmopolitan area of farukhabad in india now the second piece of the puzzle associates itself with 23rd naqshbandi sheikh hazrat khwaja amkan ki who lived in samarkand in modern afghanistan see how far the pieces of this zigs of puzzle is spread hazrat khwaja baqi ullah who was the khalifa or the chief disciple of hazrat amkan ki once traveled to mawara ul nahar on his way he dreamed that hazrat khwaja amkan ki was calling him and waiting for him anxiously he left his worldly life behind and sought his spiritual knowledge from the master of the century he kept company with masters and saints until he himself became an ocean of intellect and a saint of spirituality he traveled continuously and until he reached the city of samarkand in modern afghanistan there he connected himself with the master of his time khwaja amkan ki he received from him the way of naqshbandi order in a very short time he received what most seekers require a lifetime to receive he was elevated also through the spiritual care of ubaidullah arad another master of the past his honor came his honor became known far and wide the sheikh khwaja amkan ki blessed him with his authority khilafat and authorized him to take followers and to train them in the way of tari the system he ordered him to go back to india in preparation for new millennium however he had already been to india on personal business there he was attracted to an attraction from god's attraction sheikh predict you are going to have a follower who will be like this son this prediction was for hazrat imam rabbani ahmad al faruqi mudaddid ali sani radhiyallahu ta'ala who shrine is in sarind in 
Chandigarh, in the state of Punjab. Khwaja Baki Villa expressed his inability to such a difficult task. However, Khwaja Amkanki insisted and ordered him to get guidance from Ishtikara. Ishtikara is a kind of prayer. When the seeker is in doubt and unable to make judgment, then he seeks the assistance from higher forces in the form of Rasul and Allah. Bakiwilla performed Ishtikara. In a dream, he saw a parrot sitting on the branch of a tree. He thought that if the parrot sat on his hand, he would consider this journey lucky one. Note sooner this thought flashed across his mind than the parrot flew towards him and perched on his hand. Hazrat Bakiwilla put his saliva into his its beak, whereas the parrot put sugar into his mouth. This was the indication as well as the confirmation. Next morning, Hazrat Bakiwilla related the whole dream to his guide, who said that you should act in the light of the Ishtikara that you have performed. So the Sheikh Amkanki ordered him to leave for India immediately. Under the instructions of his Sheikh, Bakiwilla travelled to India and stayed in Lahore for one year. He was the first Nakshbandi master who travelled from Afghanistan and reached the shores of India. Here a lot of his scholars and nobles of the city met him and obtained the spiritual blessings from him. Then he proceeded to Delhi and stayed at Kila Firozabad. It was a beautiful place situated on the bank of river Yamuna, the Blue River. He set up his dwelling in a mosque over there. Bakiwilla was the first Nakshbandi master to come to India. After staying in Lahore for one year, finally he settled in New Delhi. His shrine is in Old Delhi, behind Pahar Ganj railway station, inside the Muslim cemetery. His Sheikh Khwaza Alam Kanki did not make any changes or in the technique or tariqa. However, he instructed Bakiwilla to bring even the ordinary ones into the fold, make this spiritual awareness available to people who are still not on the path, was his trust and instruction of his master. Once Bakiwilla visited a master who told him, it is good that you have brought so many into this fold. Nearly half of these are incapable on their own. Transform these people. Bring the light divine or know into their hearts so that it begins to shine with light absolute and can kindle up the dark being. Sheikh Amkanki asked him not to look at the inner capability of the individual. This way you will never find the aspirant. Had Bakiwilla not brought such relaxations in the tariqat, a vast cross-section would have remained deprived of this inner treasure. Amkanki said, I am sending you to a distant land whose very texture is soaked in spirituality. It is the land sanctified, nourished and nurtured by such forces from times immemorial. A land which is ready to explode any path. A land whose very being is not only ready, but also has the capability to infuse life even in a dead heart. I am sending you to India. India has been the university of meditation and beacon light, not only now, but from times immemorial. It has created many Buddhas. This was the background for the initial preparation for the mysteries to unfold themselves as leaves of the mystical treasure, one by one. Shape. Ahmad al faruqi Mujaddidi al Ifsani marks the beginning of a new millennium in Sunni Islamic era 
as far in Nakshbandi Tarika. Now the third piece of this mystical person. Who is this blanket wrap mystic who seemed to be from Islamic tradition? When certain events have to take place, existence, past masters or messengers manifest themselves in human form. There is a story about Shirdi Sai Baba. He lived in the mosque. He had a disciple who used to live about five miles away from him. Every day he will cook food and bring for the master. And when master has eaten, he will rush back to his home and then partake his food. And that too before sunset. Many times it used to happen when he bring the food, the master is busy and he would not be able to eat the food. And by the time he returned, it was already sunset, so he had to keep away from food. So one day the master said, you do not need to come, tomorrow I will come. He was very happy, the master is coming. And it happened, so he cleaned the house, prepared his special dishes and waited for the master. Master did not come, instead a leper came. And he sat down in front of the house. The, uh, his wounds were oozing. Flies were all around. It was an ugly scene. So he sent the leper away from there and waiting, cleaned the place and waited for the master, but he did not come. Then he rushed back to the mosque and complained to the master that you said you will come. Master said, I came, but you sent me away. He said, but you did not come, it was the leper who came. Then the seeker asked forgiveness and said, give me another chance. Master said, okay, tomorrow I will come. So now the next day he is waiting for the master or the leper to come. Neither the master come nor the leper came. Instead, a dog came. Dog came and sat down in front of the door, waiting for food to be given, but he did not recognize. He chased the dog and ran back to the master. He said, I came. In that heat of this day, there was no other option but to manifest myself. The masters, the awakened ones, they manifest through any physical form, if that be necessary for the work of transformation of human consciousness is to continue. This blanket wrap mystic is no one else but Khizra the mysterious wandering messenger of Allah. His equivalent in Hindu tariqat is sage Narad who travels said to be traveling by his mental power and he does not stay for more than two minutes in any place. He also spoke of the message of Kabir. Since the connection has to be established between Hindu and Sufi tradition, existence choose first Bakiwilla to be sent to ancient land of Hindu tradition and cultures and then choose Khizr salam to appear mystically to the doors of a pious and devout Hindu householder through whose womb a new light was to manifest. And why should this be strange? Nakshbandi Tariqat indeed has such transmission before. In the golden chain, it is known that Khwaza Ab Abul Khalid Gizdavani who enshrined the eight original principles of Khwazadan as Nakshbandi commandments was taught by Khizr al-Islam. Abdul Abbas was his was as he was known then. Indeed, he taught silent zikr recitation to him and now we have the emergence of Khizr al-Islam once again. Such events are no more coincidence 
इंस्ट डिवाइन प्लान फॉर थिंग्स टू हैपन वेन एवर सच अ बींग हैज टू बी बोर्न अ सर्टन काइंड ऑफ वूम इज टू बी प्रीपेयर ऑर्डिनरी वूम कैन नॉट एब्सॉर्ब द प्रेसेंस ऑफ सच अ बींग द बर्थ ऑफ जीसस राम कृष्ण बुद्धा उबैदुल्ला एरा ऑल बेयर टेस्टिमनी टू दिस दुर्गा देवी द मदर ऑफ लाला जी वॉज रेडी टू रिसीव द बूम ओनली द फायर नीडेड टू बी किंटल्ड फॉर द बर्थ ऑफ ए बींग वज लाइट हैज टू मैनिफेस्ट लाइक बीकन फॉर सेंचुरीज टू कम ओनली अ मैसेंजर ऑफ अल्लाह इन द फॉर्म ऑफ हिजरअल सलाम or a past sheikh or master can be chosen existence or past or current masters can manifest his consciousness through any being that is available at the moment when necessary ordinary mind considers these as miracles however such is normal process he appears and vanishes never to be seen again such is the way of the divine when existence has to assume a new form great preparation is needed it is just like you are going to visit a strange country for the first time certain preparations have to be made you will look for acquaintances if you have in that strange city once you find these connections in that new place things become easy you have someone to take care of you there something like this happens when an advanced soul has to assume birth every parent wants a loving devoted and a spiritual child to be born into their home one on whom they can feel proud however in this process the parents can only hope and pray for such a child but it is not in their hands the case with the soul is different the soul that is ready to assume form is now in unmanifest form it can see beyond time and space it can communicate with awakened ones on the on the planet earth depending on its evolution it has freedom to choose the womb parents and the environment so that the process of evolution may continue not only for him instead for humanity as well i can speak on my own experience because of the state of evolution i had this freedom i wanted the process of evolution to continue where it was left in the last manifestation it was my good fortune that a nakshbandi sheikh prish mohan lal who was in the physical form on this planet earth who happened to be my grandfather the communion between him and his concert shakuntala devi was of harmony and oneness normally there is ranko and disturbance between husband and wife but such was not the case between sufi brij mohan lal and shakuntala devi there was no better womb than shakuntala devi and sufi brij mohan lal as the father place and family environment to assume birth it was a perfect place to take birth but there was a problem the sufi brij mohan lal did not want to have any more children and so too was the case with shakuntala devi but he had no choice to fulfill divine plan he chose a different womb as soil and a different seed for this purpose mystically he adopted my physical mother gayatri devi as his daughter she was brought up as his i born she was so dear to him that he could never refuse her for anything as a result whenever her brother sufi onkarnath or any other devotee has to get anything done by the sheikh 
they will request her. Everybody knew that the Sheikh will not refuse her if she requested. Such was her relation with the Sheikh. He created a communion between my physical father Lakshmi Sahai and mother Gayatri Devi. This was the only option available for my birth. I did not like this arrangement initially as I wanted Sheikh as my father. When he explained the reason, not yet to be explained now, and assured you will remain under my care. Furthermore, I was able to see that he had already decided to leave the physical body. When I mentioned of this to him, he assured, I know this, and before I leave this world, I will fulfill the responsibility and not leave you stranded again. I will be leaving your grandmother behind to stay on the planet until all assignments are complete. Further, he explained that with this birth, your physical parents can get salvation, but there is every possibility they can miss out of their ignorance and worldly attachment. You have to make sure that this does not happen to them and they deal to salvation. He also mentioned that he had already chosen and prepared them for this conception. At this assurance, I agreed to the plan. I know at the time of my conception, it was the consciousness of Sufi Brajmohan Lal and Shakuntala Devi, but the body was that of my physical parents. This may sound like a nice story. Remember, human mind is incapable to understand subtle phenomena. After I was born, I called my grandmother as my mother and my mother as sister. Sufi Brajmohan Lal instructed that I spend most of the time with my grandmother. I still remember whenever I had to visit the shrine complex and her, it was painful to leave that place. I never liked to stay with my physical parents. After returning from the shrine complex, everything used to appear lifeless and insipid for days together. As if, like a fish, I had been thrown out of the ocean. Such was the situation when I had to stay with my physical parents. And as promised Sufi Brajmohan Lal, transferred all that was necessary to me when I was only eight months old. This was confirmed by my grandmother when I was 10 or 11. Once I complained to her that no one tells me anything to do for the process of transformation. At this later that night, she told me, you were unnecessary complaining. Your grandfather, Sufi Brijmohan Lal had already given you everything. When time is ready, you will remember everything. This is why the birth of Lalaji appears to be a zigzag puzzle with all these pieces. In the past, explanation was not necessary. However, now it needs to be explained. Durga Devi was awakened so she could provide the womb. However, the consciousness of his father, Lalaji's father, Chaudhary Harvakshray, was not capable to attract the being of Lalaji. A much higher consciousness was needed for this purpose that could only be provided by either Khizral Islam or any past awakened master from the divine realm, Alame Raya. Therefore, the visit of the blanket-wrapped mystic was needed to prepare the womb, alter the consciousness of the father, and create the environment of the birth of Lalaji. Only a being like Khizr salam or any past master's consciousness and womb of an awakened Durga Devi could attract the being of Lalaji and Chachaji into her womb. The situation was different when Chacha Ji Raghwardayal did not have any children. For that occasion, there were Sheikh, Fazl Ahmad Khan, Lalaji and Chacha Ji. It was the grace of 
شیخ مولانا فضل احمد خان در صوفی بجمال لال واس بون ایٹ اینادر ٹائم آئی ول اسپیک آف دیٹ مایا دیوی لیفٹ ہر باڈی ناٹ ٹو لونگ آفٹر دی شی گیو برتھ ٹو گوتم سدھارتھ ہو بی کیم بدھا اینڈ شی لیفٹ دی انفینٹ چائلڈ ان دی کیئر آف ہر سسٹر پرجاپتی ہو واز آلسو میری ٹو گوتمس فادر Durga Devi nourished and nurtured the young Lala Ji and Chacha Ji for the first seven years of their lives and the growth of consciousness. Thus she infused the Hindu aspect into the consciousness of the young ones which was later nourished and nurtured by Sheikh Maulana Fazlana. At the door of Durga Devi, the mysterious mystic asked for food And when he was offered vegetarian dish, he purposely asked for fish. There are two reasons for this. The fish that was offered to him came from a Muslim governor of another place, a Muslim by faith to Hindu home. And then through a devout Hindu lady, it was served to the Muslim mystic. While Durga Devi was in the service of the mystic, Inwardly, she was in her prayer. She was in remembrance of her idol Hindu incarnation, Lord. All along, she was seeing her cherished Ram in place of the ascetic and her eyelids were glittering with tears of joy because she was serving to her beloved Lord. Thus, the child that was to be born with both Hindu and Muslim traits and deep understanding as the bridge between these two paths and culturally and religiously diverse ways, the fish was transmitted from a Muslim origin to Hindu hands to a holy mystic. Why the blanket wrapped mystic of unknown and unknowable realm asks for fish? Have you never thought what is the relevance of fish and its connection with the advent of Lala Ji and Chacha Ji? We must consider here the symbolism of fish. First we know in Holy Quran, in Surah 18, the cave, there is a story of Prophet Moses, Musa a.s. who also met Khisra a.s. Prophet Moses a.s and his servant helper also carried a fish which also disappeared into the river in a place where two rivers met. There he found Khizr and knowledge beyond reason. The fish is also a well-known symbol for Jesus Christ as Savior. Jesus Christ was also offered broiled fish upon resurrection was able to make some of the apostles fishers of men. Also the Matsya Avatar, the fish incarnation or the manifestation of Vishnu was also a fish. Vishnu is the divine principle of preserver and this first manifestation represents the principle of savior in the starting point of this primordial tradition. Fish represents the process of evolution and the first form of life comes into existence as fish. The first incarnation according to Hindus is in the form of fish. Christians use fish as their symbols. Christians, Muslims and other religious faction may inadvertently reject this concept of Hindu. This is ignorance. To come out of such ignorance is the beginning of inward journey. Every life, irrespective of its religious upbringing, begins as fish and swims in mother's womb and implants into placenta, into the uterus. In human development, a fetus is a prenatal human form between its embryonic state and its birth. Fish represents this process symbolically. The fetal stage of development tends to be taken as beginning 
at the gestational period of 11 weeks, that is 9 weeks after fertilization. In biological terms, however, prenatal development is a continuum with no clear defining feature distinguishing an embryo from fetus. The word fetus generally implies that an embryo has developed to the point of being recognizable as a human. This is the point usually taken to be ninth week after fertilization. A fetus is also characterized by the presence of all the major body organs, though they will not yet be fully developed and functional and some not yet situated in their final anatomical location. The moment a single sperm fertilizes an egg from a tiny egg to growing embryo, an incredible process of conception begins. Ovulation happens each month when one of the woman's two ovaries releases a mature egg. It happens about two weeks after the first day of her last menstrual period. After the egg is released from the ovary, it travels into the fallopian tube. It stays there until a single sperm fertilizes it. A man may ejaculate 40 million to 150 million sperms which starts swimming upstream towards the fallopian tube on their mission to fertilize an egg. Fast swimming sperm can reach the egg in a half an hour while the others may take days. These sperms can live up to 48 to 72 hours, only a few hundred will even come close to the egg because of many natural barriers that exist in body, in a woman's body. It takes about 24 hours for a sperm cell to fertilize an egg. When the sperm penetrates the egg, the surface of the egg changes so that no other sperm can enter. At the moment of fertilization, baby's genetic makeup is complete. Including whether it is a boy or a girl, the fertilized egg starts growing fast, dividing into many cells. It leaves the fallopian tube and enters the uterus three to four days after fertilization. In rare cases, the fertilized egg does not leave the fallopian tube. This is called a tubal pregnancy or ectopic pregnancy and is a danger to the mother. After it gets to the uterus, the fertilized egg attaches to the lining of the uterus or endometrium. This process is called implantation. The, cell, the cells keep dividing within a, about a week of conception, a hormone called human chlorinic gonadotropin or HCG can be found in the mother's blood and it is produced by cells that will become placenta. The hormones will show up on the blood or urine pregnancy test at the doctor's office, but it usually takes three to four weeks for level of HCG to be high enough to be detected by home pregnancy test. After the egg attaches to uterus, some cells become the placenta while others become embryo. The heart begins beating during the weeks, week 5. The brain, the spinal cord, heart and other organs begin to form. At the 8th week, the developing baby, now called a fetus, is well over a half 
inch long and is still growing. A full term delivery generally happens around 40 weeks. This is the process of evolution and the fish represents this process. In the present context of the advent of Lalaji, fish as a symbol represents this process of evolution. Now Nakshbandi Tarikat has to undergo such process of evolution. Hindu and Muslim aspects have to merge into one another to form embryo for future process of transformation to continue. On the significance of symbol of fish, Rumi, a 13th century mystic, says, I have a thirsty fish in me that can never find enough of what it is thirsty for. Thirst Thirsty is of something that can be quenched in no time by giving some water, if it is an ordinary thirst. But Rumi is certainly not talking about thirsty for water. Instead, he is talking about thirsty for self-awareness. Every self has got its own thirst and self is not really aware exactly or fully what it is thirsty of. As the process of evolution continues and self evolves more and more, it comes to know or come close to what the self is really thirsty for. This each one of us has to seek within. Whatever the individual may perform or achieve something great and the people of the world and around them would have well appreciated or celebrated it. There is no problem. Still that individual may not necessarily to be contented with it. The inner self has a different kind of thirst to be quenched. It is like the fish in the ocean is still thirsty. It has water over it and below it. The fish is surrounded by water all around, yet still it remains thirsty. To quench this thirst, your inner fish continues swimming even against the flow to fulfill the inner longing. As a child, as a child we are open enough to tell our elders and others what we need or thirsty for. When we grow up, we get into many aspects of life and we are exposed to so many fields of life and whichever path we are in. We strongly believe that it will lead us to our destination. Once you end up with the wrong destiny, this will aggravate your thirst more and more. Before, and the worst part is that you is, that is still you are not sure of what can really quench your thirst. The process of evolution is the presence, the process of evolution is the essence of Hindu concept of incarnations. Hindus call this story of ten incarnations. Scientifically, this represents the process and explains how growth takes place at various levels. Indeed, it is the way human consciousness evolves from gross to subtle levels and travels to various chakras or stations according to Hindu and Sufi. Through my yoga maya, I am born from age to age, says Krishna. Yoga maya means out of my own free will. I will, I wish, and it happens. A mystic or a master is born out of his own free will. He chooses his parents, environment, place, and time of birth. He needs an extraordinary womb to enter. Using the ten main incarnations as a symbol, one can see the gradual evolution of soul in its journey to ultimate fruition. The first incarnation or the stage of evolution is a fish that lives solely in water. It cannot live out of water. The second incarnation is a turtle and this is amphibious. While it lives in water, it has the ability 
to and also come out onto the land and stay for a short period. The third incarnation is a bow, bow and now lives on land but is still of animal consciousness or gross unconsciousness. The fourth incarnation is half lion, half man. The animal consciousness has reached its pinnacle in the lion and is now emerging as human consciousness. This is represented by half lion, half man incarnation. Such is the process of transmission from animal consciousness into human consciousness. This we can see in our life. Sometimes our consciousness is that of an animal, other times is that of a man, and we swing between these stages. This takes place through various layers of unconsciousness, subconscious, collective unconscious, cosmic unconscious, collective subconscious and cosmic subconscious. I have, this, I have spoken on these stages from time to time. The fifth incarnation is a dwarfed man. Human consciousness has evolved, but it still has to fully manifest. From here, the various layers of consciousness begin. Consciousness, collective consciousness, cosmic consciousness, super consciousness or Buddha consciousness. The sixth incarnation is a fully man, but this man is brute and savage, a warrior, and is still to progress along the path. From the seventh onward, the real purpose of soul's incarnation is approaching its ultimate peak. The seventh incarnation is a religious man, Dharmic, coming out of the warrior tribe, he has journeyed far and wide, now begins to live a life of righteousness. He has been considered to be the fulfillment of humanity by many, but the journey is not yet over and light has not fully manifested its latent divinity. The eighth incarnation is a manifestation of love, its multifarious aspects, the righteous Warrior is now an ideal lover. This incarnation is also considered to be the ultimate fulfillment and many souls have ceased to continue the journey beyond this stage. This is the development of heart center of Kali. Kali is very important to develop for the process because it is when the Kali is fully developed then compassion is born when the energy of the heart or kalp is wedded to that of intellect. The ninth incarnation is awakened intelligence. Your heart is invoked, but it does not have direction. The In ninth incarnation is the awakened intelligence manifested via Buddha consciousness. This is the highest but is still penultimate state. As far as the concept of incarnation is concerned, the goal has been reached, but the scriptures speak of ten incarnations and yet to be born incarnation is known as Kalki. Kalki is not a physical being to be born as other have been born, but this Kalki is the birth of highest consciousness within us. We have known various levels of consciousness and our consciousness remains divided. When it reaches to the level of Buddha, it is that all the rivers, they had their separate entity. They have merged into the ocean. Now ocean, all the rivers are now identified as ocean. No more Hudson, no more Nile, no more Amazon, no more Thames, but they are known as ocean. And ocean lends its magnanimity and quality to every drop of the river water. No more Hindu, no more Muslim, no more Christian, no more man, no more woman, just pure beingness. And that state is yet to be born within us. When human consciousness has fulfilled its righteousness, righteous aspect, love, 
and intellect, then this consciousness, Kalki, which is beyond enlightenment, is born within and soul attains its ultimate fruition. These represent the growth of consciousness through various psychic centers or chakras or nine states of development, nine stations as narrated by Sufis. The very word Kalki comes from the root that means time and its three aspects, past, future, and there is certainly something between these two. Verily, Kalki implies a state that which is of the beyond. Kalki is not a physical being to be born sometimes in future. Kalki is you. When you have attained the highest state of consciousness, Kalki is born in you as the ultimate fruition. But in order to be born in us, we must fulfill the essential dharma or the righteousness, essential nature, not of outer religion, love, expression of inner bliss and growth of heart center and intellect. The state that can discern beyond time and space, only then you can become fit receptacle to house the highest state of divinity. The symbol of fish represents a new process of evolution has now begun, but it has still to attain to fruition, the ultimate fruition. These were the puzzle pieces related to the manifestation of absolute consciousness in human form. As the process continues, I will speak of other pieces of this mystical puzzle. The process has begun. It will continue through various phases, some of which relate to political, while others relate to cultural disintegration. All these have influenced the process of evolution of Tariqat in myriad ways. Finally, it culminated when Lalaji came in the company of his Sheikh Naqshbandi Maulana Fazlana Khan. I related to you the puzzle, the zigzag pieces that connected to the birth or the advent of these two mystics. However, the life beyond birth is to continue where how the predictions were made nearly 100 years before they were born and they were they came in the company of the sheikh and thus continued the Nakshbandi Tariqat. This has been like an intriguing, a mystical tale, but it is like this. When I was asked to speak, to write, this, I wondered, can it can the works of Nakshbandi, Sufi Brajmohan Lalu, pent the life story of Lalaji and Chachaji between 1953 to 1955? Thereafter, much later, it was continued by Sufi Omkarnath. It was very difficult to translate that. I remembered. The first story of Hindu incarnation, a scripture Ramayan, was written in Sanskrit by sage Balmiki many lives ago, many centuries ago. Then in 14th century, another mystic or sage Tulsidas appeared. He did not translate the original story. Instead, he understood every facet of it and presented in modern present-day language for the better understanding of the human consciousness so that the process of transformation may continue. For the same reason, I have presented this message for the benefit of all those who are around and who will come in times to come so that this message becomes understood easily. The birth of the masters, higher souls, and this is how the process of conception has to take place. When someone has to bear a child, 
how can he attract an advance or a weakened being into her womb? How can father prepare himself for the birth of such a consciousness?